it feels like it has been an eternity since we last checked in at Epic Universe. A busy life also does not help getting these updates completed either. In the last three weeks, Epic Universe has seen tremendous progress in the detail work which much of the park is seeing. From the character head being revealed on top of Minecart Madness, along with the entrance signage, billowing smoke from the chimneys inside of Darkmoor, and the foam burn that has been on the edge of the Constellation Carousel has been demolished and removed. All of this and more on this week's Universal Epic Universe Construction Update with our aerial views provided to us as always by BioReconstruct. As we start this week's update, just outside of Epic Universe, in the entrance area of the property, throughout the massive garden courtyard between the entrance to the park and the parking lot, there have been several new lighting fixtures installed along the pathways hidden by the vegetation. The closer we get to the park entrance, there is a lot of theming staged in front of the security plazas. This theming is for the beams connecting the entrance support buildings to the security plazas. On top of the entrance support buildings inside of the park, the second dome on the right side is ready to start receiving glass as all of the green framing has been installed. Below the roof line, the colorful courtyard that meets guests as they pass through the Kronos Tower has been nearly completed. With the completion of this courtyard, the concrete in this area has given a more completed look since we were last overhead. Another colorful concrete courtyard that I know I was not expecting was one that is in between the island inside of the cascading waterfalls and the phase two dining locations. This courtyard, along with the concrete pathways, has connected Luna Overlook to almost all the way to the entrance portal to How to Train Your Dragon. On the opposite side of the cascading waterfalls sits the full service dining location of Atlantic, where a lot of detailed theming and landscaping continues to take place. In front of the entrance to the restaurant, the stairs and several pathways are starting to be formed as concrete is being prepared to be poured in this area. Between Atlantic and the entry portal to Super Nintendo World, there are several themed elements staged on the ground for Atlantic. Two of these items are large seashells, which are likely for the entrance area of this restaurant. On the opposite side of the Super Nintendo World portal, near the building which houses the Super Nintendo Store and Pizza Moon, there have been several new concrete garden foundations which have been poured in recent weeks. The entrance pathways for Pizza Moon continue to develop as we make our way towards the center of Celestial Park. Inside of the colorful courtyard near the entrance of Constellation Carousel, the last pieces of the decorative dome can be seen staged on the ground. Between the ribs of the dome, additional ornamental theming has been installed. At the top of the dome, the Pegasus, which has been placed for some time now, has been removed for some reason. The scrims that were removed for the last few updates inside of the carousel have been reinstalled, which is likely for additional ride platform painting. The biggest change in this week's update is the foam berm on the edge of the central water feature has completely been demolished and removed. A short flight about a week ago before this update saw the demolition beginning, but no one noticed it because no one would have imagined that crews would be demolishing the berm that they have been working on for the last several months. Was there a fatal error made in the construction or design of this berm? Or did Universal change its mind mid-build to replace the berm with something else? What are your thoughts on this huge mystery? Be sure to leave a comment below what you think. Near the vanishing berm, a lot of new landscaping has been planted around the front comet theming element of Stardust Racers. This additional landscaping has also seen changes around the entrance sign to the coaster, which is significantly harder to spot now that is surrounded by greenery. One change that is very obvious 
is the back of house service road, which has been recently paved. The jet black asphalt stands out like a sore thumb around the color of both Stardust Racers and the Isle of Burke. Behind the coaster building, in the extended queue area, the circular queue coverings have begun to be installed. There are several coverings in various states of completion, with some sections not started yet with pieces staged on the ground nearby. Across the walkway is a building which will hold private events inside of Epic Universe. This building has seen a lot of color added to the front facade in the last couple of weeks. On the same side of Celestial Park is Meteor Astro Pub, where roofing detail is beginning to be installed. Around the facade, the brickwork has made its way to the rotunda, where it is nearing completion. Opposite Meteor Astro Pub is the Oaken Star Tavern, where out front where the kiosks are, roofing is continuing on these three kiosks. Nearby, there has been a new circular concrete form that has appeared between these kiosks. Behind the main show fountain, the waterfall that feeds this fountain has seen landscaping planted on either side. A little farther up this water feature, we can see the irrigation system is being tested in one of the gardens. At the top of this water feature is the statue of Helios, where the ring behind him has been completed and is now beginning to be covered in scaffolding to be painted. High above the statue of Helios is his namesake, Helios Grand Hotel, which has had a lot of work on the entrance side of the hotel in the last several weeks. The driveway of the hotel has had its final paving, along with painting of traffic markers beginning to be laid down. At the base of the hotel tower, some landscaping is beginning to be planted as the greenery from the pool area is closer to completion. Inside of the pool area itself, the pool has been painted and filled with clear water ready to meet guests. At the walk-in portion of the pool, we can see water jetting up from nozzles on the pool floor, giving the volcano effect in several places. Above the pool bar, the dome is just about completely painted bronze matching the domes on top of the hotel tower. The poolside cabanas are making progress as well, with the first cabana closest to Dark Universe being fully outfitted in its top and sidewalls. Behind the pool area of Helios Grand is the land based off Universal Monsters, Dark Universe, where there are some new details to note. Inside of the village of Darkmoor, fog is rising from the recently completed well in the center of the village. Above the village, two chimneys, one on either side of the village, has smoke rising out of them. These are minor details, but all add up to the whole ambiance of this village. Just inside of the dark forest, guests are met by Curse of the Werewolf spinning coaster where several additional posts have been installed over the last couple of weeks. Bio has also gifted us with some of the best aerial pictures of the coaster trains to date, with several different angles along different areas of the track. Construction around Frankenstein's Manor continues to wrap up out front and behind in the outdoor queue. Inside of the outdoor queue, a large number of trees have been planted giving a dense forced look similar to the queue at Curse of the Werewolf. Dark Universe this update does not have much else to go over, and another land in the same situation is the one directly across Celestial Park, being the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic. Just outside of the entry portal to the land, small trees have been planted in the garden openings inside of the entry courtyard to the land. Before entering the streets of Paris, guests must walk through the Phoenix Arch, which looks only half completed with the scaffolding removed. There is an obvious line where the weathering and painting was stopped, and it is likely that the scaffolding was removed to evaluate the current status of the theming. Inside of the streets, the street lights 
on the storefronts are going through testing in several areas of the land. The theming of the Metro Flu, which will be the entrance to the Battle of the Ministry ride, has yet to start making any major strides. Major strides have been made inside of the British Ministry of Magic. Universal has given us a sneak peek of the work going on inside of this massive show building. These newly released pictures show how detailed the theming is inside of this attraction, which looks absolutely stunning. These pictures also include an actual view of the ride vehicle for this attraction. If you think these are renderings, you'd be thinking wrong, because these are in-person pictures of different areas inside of the ministry. Back on the streets, throughout the rest of the land, there have only been minor changes which are hard to notice during these flights. Things like small signs, paintings in dark areas, and a few bushes here or there tend to go unnoticed sometimes. However, we will still visit this magical land every flight we can to see what there is to be seen. Going from the Land of Wizards to the Land of Dragons, there are several new major features that have arisen inside of How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. In front of the entry portal to the land, the landscaping and walkways continue to be refined as their shapes are finalized. As guests enter Burke, they are greeted by a large lagoon with two large statues. Around this lagoon is a large boardwalk, where we can see the lights on top of the piers being tested. Underneath this bridge, Hiccup's winged gliders dives underneath through a fog effect after splashing across the lagoon's surface. Just past the lagoon, on the edge of the land, is the children's play area of Viking Training Camp, where the entrance to this area has received a lot of colorful dragon theming. Along with several new framing pieces inside of the playground being installed, we also have our first slide sighting, with both yellow and a blue slide. Behind Viking Training Camp is the second launch of Hiccup's Winged Gliders, which has seen the dragons inside of the rocks moving for the first time during ride testing. Inside of this launch, the coaster cars travel forwards before drifting back, and finally launching down the tracks before flying through the grandstands behind Dragon Racers Rally. Inside of the queue for Hiccup's Winged Gliders, the majority of the queue posts have been installed along with several small areas of landscaping have been planted. During this week's flight, we have been able to see some movement of the coaster cars in several different areas of the track. The way the cars move does make the coaster look similar to the movements of Hagrid's in Islands of Adventure. In the opposite corner of the land sits the show building that houses the Untrainable Dragon Theater Show, where the theming at the entrance of the building looks to be complete. Additional dragon theming has been placed throughout this area of the land, with scaffolding surrounding the dragons on pedestals near the footbridge leading to the village. On top of this bridge, new carved dragon theming has been added since the last time we took flight over Burke. Speaking of taking flight over Burke, we have now had our second dragon drone sighting of this faraway land. In the center of the village, the new fountain has been installed after only seeing the beginnings of the construction last update. Mead Hall has also seen significant progress as well with the addition of the steps and ramp leading up to the main entrance of this dining location. Small bushes and plants have also begun to be planted around the base of Mead Hall. Across the village, at the retail building, closer to the entrance of Hiccup's winged gliders, the roof has begun to be painted a teal color. On the edge of the village is the second lagoon of the land, which is the home of the target boat ride of Fire Drill. The load station continues to receive roof work as it gets closer to completion. Overlooking Fire Drill is the outdoor seating area for Spitfire Grill, where the roof frame for the tent has begun to be constructed. Currently, the frame is about halfway completed, so by the time we check back in the next update, this frame should be complete. At the main building for Spitfire Grill, the grass above the ordering window has been completely installed. 
The last structure that has had changes is the small structure near the entry portal to the land along the boardwalk. This structure has been a bare frame for quite some time and is now seeing some much needed love. From the land of dragons to the land of animation of Super Nintendo World, we have just as much, if not even more details to go over in this most colorful land in Epic Universe. In front of the entry portal to the land, the colorful courtyard has been completed and the warp pipe on top of the portal that was removed has still yet to be returned. Entering the upper level of the Mushroom Kingdom, guests will travel through Peach's Castle, which has seen a major difference in painting. All of the turrets, except the main center turret, has been painted and scaffolding removed. In front of the castle, there looks as though there is a circular indention in the concrete for another future concrete pour for the guest pathway. About halfway between Peach's Castle and Bowser's Fortress is the oversized piranha plant, which has had large leaves placed on its stem. Around the pathway leading up to the piranha plant, several large themed clocks are being installed. At Bowser's Fortress, Bowser's face has been completed with the scaffolding now completely removed from much of this area. Only high above on the main turret does scaffolding remain. Much of the facade of the Mario Kart ride, being Bowser's Fortress, looks to be completed, with the exit being Mario Motors complete as well. In front of Mario Motors, the concrete pathways are being painted in very vibrant colors seen in other areas of the land. The area in front of Bowser Jr. is being painted like this as well. A small detail is that some of the mystery boxes that are mounted on the walls near Bowser's Fortress appear to be lit up for testing. On the side of Mount Beanpole, a new addition of four stacked Goombas has made an appearance as the newest theming element on the mountain. Along the ride path near the final scene of Yoshi's Adventure, the warp pipes that the ride vehicles travel through have been completed. The ride vehicles also pass over a recently themed bridge which leads guests to the second mini-land of Super Nintendo World. Inside of the lower level of the Mushroom Kingdom, you will find the entrance to Toadstool Cafe, where the mushroom cap has been installed along with what looks like a themed chimney. Scaffolding is starting to be erected around this location, which means painting will start soon. Throughout the entire lower level of the land, theming elements are staged all over the courtyard. The Mushroom Kingdom and the second mini land of Donkey Kong Country are separated by a large green wall, which continues to receive painted artwork. Just inside of the land, the crashed plane of Funky's Flying By gift shop sits, with the scaffolding being removed from this location, now that theming has been completed. Inside of the pathway, there are several small gardens, where inside one, two new crooked palm trees have been planted. Walking closer to the entrance of the coaster of the land, guests pass the two kiosks of Donkey Kong Treehouse and the Bubbly Barrel Snack Stand. On top of Donkey Kong's treehouse, the top themed element has been installed on the roof. In the same area, several new barrels have been placed throughout, with several staged ready to be placed. The most significant progress made this week inside of Super Nintendo World is around the land's coaster of Minecart Madness. Both the entrance and exit signage for the attraction have been installed. Behind the entrance, we can see where the queues are split for different lines. Separating the coaster from the walkway of the land are large themed wall sections. Some of these sections have already been installed, with several still staged nearby, waiting their turn to be placed. At one of the highest points of the land is the themed golden character head which has been hiding behind scaffolding for the last several months. The scaffolding has now begun to be removed from this character head, giving us our first views of this finished product. Along the coaster tracks near one of the hairpins, the largest of the three screaming pillars has been surrounded in scaffolding since last update. 
Currently, the scaffolding has been removed with the result of feathers being installed on top of the pillar. We are now about six months away from the grand opening of Universal Epic Universe. Single day tickets for annual pass holders are now sold out for almost the first three weeks of the park opening. Universal has not said if any more availability will be released for these dates, but it is safe to say that if you do not have tickets for this time, you probably won't get one unfortunately. Again, I would like to give a huge shout out to BioReconstruct for his continued coverage of the construction progress of Epic Universe. If you enjoyed this update, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss the next Universal Epic Universe construction update. And until next time travelers, have a great one.